The gardens of Jannah in this world are two. They're the gardens in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is remembered, and they are the gardens in which someone else is remembered for the sake of Allah. Now, what do I mean by that? The Prophet sallallahu said that the circles of knowledge in this life are gardens of paradise. How so? Allah is praising you, the angels are praising you, and you are dwelling in a place where your name is only being increased in rank. Similarly, the Prophet sallallahu said that when you go and visit a sick person, 70,000 angels accompany you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifts you with a garden of many fruits in Jannah. So subhanAllah, people carry flowers to visit the sick here and let them know that they're in their thoughts and prayers. And Allah, who is never outdone in goodness, gives those who visit the sick unimaginable gardens of flowers that cannot even be perceived in this world. So when you remember Allah, or you remember someone else for the sake of Allah, your gardens of paradise are only expanding. So you have your palace and you come outside and you don't have to worry about the weather being bad. It's beautiful weather in Jannah. But before we talk about the gardens themselves, what are the other properties that you own besides your palace? Because remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not just give you your own place to dwell, but structures of beauty all around you. So you go outside and what do you see? You see the khiyam, which are tents or pavilions that serve primarily as the guest houses. And Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said that these pavilions are different from the ghuraf, from the apartments and from the palaces. They are pavilions that are situated in the gardens and on the beaches and the riverfronts of Jannah. And the pavilions are for guests and for enjoyment. So Imam Ibn Abi Dunya rahimahullah, he explains it in this way. He says that all of the heavenly creatures reside in these guest homes and the palaces are where only the believers live. So this is what is built for the believers, by the believers, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, حُورٌ مَقْصُورَاتٌ فِي الخيام, That it is in these guest homes that the حُورُ الْعِينَ, the maidens reside. And then when you read about the servants in Al-Jannah, then they await you at the gates and the doors of your palace. And when you want anything, it comes to you without any effort. And what are the angels doing? They're constantly checking up on you while you are in your palace, but you retire to your palace in privacy. The khiyam is also where you meet and receive friends. So you have this concept of the majalis, the gatherings in paradise. And so whether you are in a gathering, let's say in one of the sahaba, in one of their khiyam, or someone comes to you, you receive each other and you are received in these khiyam, in these pavilions. And even then, subhanAllah, privacy is emphasized. The Prophet ﷺ said, the believer in paradise will have a tent made out of a single hallowed out pearl and it's 60 miles long. And as he visits the families and the guests in each one of them, no one will be able to see the other. So privacy is being emphasized just like it is with the ghuraf. Ibn Abbas عنه, and Ibn Mas'ud said that this tent will be a gem of a hollow pearl, one farsakh high and 50 farsakhs wide. Now a farsakh is about five miles. So you can think about the width and the height of these places. Then he said that it will have a thousand doors of gold and an angel will enter from each door with a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah, these are the guest houses. And inside these guest homes, you also have day beds that you can relax on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مُتَّكِئِينَ عَلَىٰ فُرُشٍ بَطَائِنُهَا مِنْ اسْتَبْرَقْ وَجَنَ الْجَنَّتَيْنِ دَانِ That these believers will recline on furnishings lined with fine fabric, and the fruit of both gardens will hang within reach. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also, مُتَّكِئِينَ عَلَىٰ رَفْرَفٍ خُضْرٍ وَعَبْقَرِيٍ حِسَانٍ That they'll be reclining on green cushions, and fine, beautiful carpets. And you also have where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِيهَا سُرُرٌ مَرْفُوعَ وَأَكْوَابٌ مَوْضُوعَ وَنَمَارِقُ مَصْفُوفَ وَزَرَابِيُّ مَبْثُوثَ That in it are raised couches, cups put in plates, cushions lined up, and carpets spread all around. So basically, you have gold doors, green drapes, green cushions lined up, 
and fine green carpets in these high ceiling guest pavilions. And these are, again, in the gardens, and the gardens themselves we haven't even started to talk about. Now, subhanAllah, when you think about exotic destinations in this world, they always have a few things. They always have beautiful sand, they've got grass, and they've got water. And the theme of Jannah is indeed Jannat, these incredible gardens that never cease to amaze the eye and offer absolute comfort. And you have all the time in the world. So a person could stop and admire a flower for a hundred years and completely be unworried about time. So let's start with just the ground of Jannah or its soil. So you got the homes, the guest homes, and now you're looking into your gardens. The Prophet ﷺ said that the gravel of Jannah is pearl and ruby and that the dirt of Jannah is saffron. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, its dirt is saffron, but its soil is musk. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he reconciles this by saying that while the color is saffron, the fragrance is musk, and of course, Jannah has variety. And he said, this is the best combination because it's the best of beauty and radiance. And in some narrations, the Prophet ﷺ mentions the grounds being pure white musk. So again, more than one surface and each one being more beautiful than the other. And in the famous hadith of Ibrahim السلام, giving advice on dhikr, on the remembrance of Allah, which we will get to, he said that the plains of Jannah are white musk with fine grains. So imagine sandy white beaches, but imagine now that the beaches have a smell. And we understand it better when we look at the Prophet Sallallahu journey on the night of Al-Isra and Mi'raj. He said والسلام, that when Jibreel would strike the ground in paradise, the fragrance would come out. So imagine that with every step in paradise, a fragrance is elicited, just making it so much more beautiful. The feel of the soil on your feet, how it smells, how it looks, all of that is Jannah, all of that is pleasure. And in one hadith, the Prophet وسلم, said that the ground of paradise is white. And in one narration, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned hills and dunes of camphor. And he said وسلم, that people gather around these hills and dunes and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends upon them while they are gathered breezes of mercy that continue to diffuse upon them the fragrance of the musk of Jannah. Now, when the Sahaba used to hear of these gardens, they knew that the gardens of this world meant nothing compared to them. When Abu Talha radiallahu ta'ala anhu heard لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ That you will not achieve righteousness or its reward being Jannah until you spend of that which you love most. So he comes to the Prophet وسلم, and he says, Ya Rasulullah, I have this garden of mine in Medina and it is the most prized garden in Medina. It was a garden in front of the Masjid of the Prophet وسلم, known as Bayruha. And it had all sorts of springs and trees. And Abu Talha said, I couldn't think of anything more beloved to me than this. So I'm giving away this garden because he was seeking that garden in Jannah. And when Abu Dahdah radiallahu ta'ala anhu heard, Man qardan hasana lah. Who will loan to Allah a beautiful loan so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply it and grant him a generous reward. He immediately comes to the Prophet وسلم, and he says, here is a garden with 600 palm trees. And I'm giving it for this garden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he comes to his garden to tell his wife that he donated it, his wife was picking dates with their son. And he says, Ya Umm Dahdah, O Umm Dahdah, leave this garden for I sold it for a garden in Jannah. And she starts knocking the dates out of her son's hand, saying, Rabi halbayr, Rabi halbayr, Rabi halbayr, that this is a profitable trade, this is a profitable trade, this is a profitable trade. And the Prophet ﷺ says, in amazement of this, how many bundles of date palms are there in Jannah for Abu Dahdah radiallahu ta'ala anhu? Now, how many gardens of Jannah do you sit in in terms of gardens of knowledge? And how many gardens of Jannah do you make yourself by visiting the forgotten? And how many gardens of Jannah have you purchased by donating the goods of this world? Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'innah Irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyah 
فَدَخُلِي فِي عِبَادِي وَدَخُلِي جَنَّتِي